settle down with a city that's done. Speak the words and spoken toast, the day is done. Won't you wash it away? Won't you wash it away? You say you'd try Oh, won't you try Hey everyone, today in conversation with us is Asela Pereira, who is an indie singer and songwriter from Colombo. Asela has been writing original music for the past 11 years, and he's also the co-founder of a community-based music concert called the Melomanic Sessions, which fosters local artists and bands. Hi Asela, it's very nice to have you with us today. Hey Shalindri, thanks for having me on as well. Yes. So to start things off today, uh, could you talk a little bit about how you began? Since when have you been passionate about music and what inspired you to start writing music? Well, music has been a part of my life ever since I remember. I mean, even as a kid, um, a lot of my relations were in bands and they were musicians back where I was born in Austria as well. So music's always been a part of it. Um, I actually started playing an instrument quite late though. Uh, probably in around 2005, I picked up a guitar and started learning the basics. Um, and then just uh, took part in a couple of competitions um, and then moved on to writing original music in around 2008. So um, it was always an av avenue to you know, express uh, myself creatively. Um, but also being an introvert at that age, I mean, it kind of made sense to like pull whatever I had to say into like uh, writing songs in that sense. Right. So 11 years is quite a long time, right? How has your journey been so far? And if you could also talk about uh, your music, what exactly do you particularly focus on? Uh, touching on the journey, I think it's been quite a blessing in the sense that um, in terms of life challenges and all of that, music's always been something that I've turned to either just by simply listening to it or even performing. Uh, it gives you a sort of break away from the mundane and you know it triggers you to be creative also right it inspires you um, so in that sense it's been a real blessing to have and through music I've met so many like-minded individuals that now I call friends like you said through the melomanic sessions uh, so many uh, people have come through who've you know uh, vibe pretty much on the same level and we've you know fostered a community there where you know music takes priority uh, but also it's uh, very much a friendship so through that We've actually, I mean, it's a huge part of this album as well, where a lot of those people that I've met over the years are now involved in creating this uh, over the last two and a half years. Um, yeah. Right. So, uh, as, as much as listening to music and enjoying the rhythm, I would say the lyrics also play a very important role. So, as a songwriter, uh, do you have a particular inspiration for your lyrics and uh, how has that been? Yeah, so in terms of lyrics, I think I... I gravitate towards being quite personal in terms of what I want to express. I think there's a common not a, you know, saying going around that it's very easy to write sad songs, it's <laughs> slightly harder to write the happier ones. Um, so yeah, I mean, I gravitate towards personal experiences, but also um, I try to keep it fresh by sometimes taking uh, third person perspectives in certain approaches to songwriting, which is also fun, because you end up creating a, a situation that might not necessarily have happened to you. Uh, but you put yourself in that place trying to relate to it and trying to, you know, imagine what it could be. Um, so there's different aspects to it. Uh, but also in terms of music, I think I've been inspired quite a bit by the bands and the artists that I listen to. Um, bands like Switchfoot, um, John Mayer, um, pretty much, you know, um, indie artists who have a lot more um, emphasis on lyrics as well, like you said. So, uh, as I mentioned previously, you are the co-founder of uh, the Millimanic Sessions, right? Yeah. What exactly is a music concert community group and what, uh, what particularly do you all focus on? So, uh, the Millimanic Sessions are fondly known as Mello. Uh, it started off in 2011 and it was found, founded by four, four of us. Uh, basically, four musicians who just felt like at the time, while there were 
intermittent concerts happening. Uh, there was no regular platform for artists to, you know, express themselves basically. So we decided instead of waiting for someone else to start, why not start it ourselves? And uh, initially it started off as a one-off. Uh, we did it in aid of um, a, a charity cause. Um, but then it went off so well that it felt quite organic and um, the, be the meaning behind it was quite uh, pure. So we decided to just take it forward and see how it goes and then I mean basically eight years down the line we're still going strong. Uh, obviously along the way there have been challenges in terms of you know logistics and things like that. We started off at the warehouse project in Maradana uh, and then in terms of venues we started moving out to several locations in Colombo. Um, it's a very cozy and intimate uh, atmosphere um, I, and the people I think most importantly what we've emphasized is come there for the music um, and there's a lot of focus on the artists uh, giving them the opportunity to you know uh, present their work. So how has the response been towards it? Um, so it's like you said it's a community so the, the greatest reward is that you have people who come in regularly um, who just become second phase is like it. it's a second home basically so um, there's a lot of interaction between the artists and the audience there's no separation as such um, for the simple example of we usually don't have a stage uh, it's very much you know a conversation between uh, the performer and the audience um, yeah and it, yeah so they invest quite a lot of uh, love into it um, and we've had people who've been you know connected with it over the years throughout yeah so you are about to release your uh, second full-length album, am I right? On the 29th of January, right? On the 29th. So uh, the title of this is Gold. Is there any particular significance behind this title? And if you could talk a bit about the album, and as well as if there's any difference in this particular album that you didn't have in the previous? Yeah, so the title of the album, like you said, is Gold. Um, the intention behind it was to... So it was coming from a place of trying to understand what makes us as human beings happy in, in our day to day. Um, there is the common misconception that you know you have to uh, be at a certain place, be it in terms of uh, wealth or in terms of your status and things like that, but at the end of the day truly what does happiness mean? So that's basically what the title signifies. Um, and the common thread in the album I would say is that it touches on different areas in terms of that pursuit of happiness. Um, so there's one song which we just played uh, called Try, uh, which is relating simply to the fact that sometimes the thing that you do day in day out in terms of work may not necessarily be your passion, but the means to and end to you know pursue your passion. Uh, so things like that. Um, yeah, uh, and it's taken about two and a half years to put this together because uh, it's been slightly different from the previous times that I've recorded music. Um, previously, I used to do uh, music recordings at home in a small studio that I had set up for myself. Um, but having taken some time off, uh, the last album being in 2015, uh, I decided that if I'm getting back to in, into it, I wanted to do it in a significantly different way. Just to keep it exciting for myself as well. Uh, so I stepped into a studio with uh, an engineer called Nishan Daniel. Um, and we basically brought in a lot of the uh, uh, musicians, like I said, that I've gotten to know through Mellow. Uh, and we collaborated on a lot of the songs. So something that started off on just guitar and voice um, ended up being much larger in terms of the sound, um, in terms of the genre influences. Um, purely because there were other people who were pouring their time and love into the songs, bringing their own influences in as well. Um, so it was a really rewarding experience. Um, and I learned a lot from it as well through that time. So as you proceeded in your journey towards success, I'm sure you would have had to face so many obstacles, right? Yeah. So if you could highlight a few of these obstacles and how you managed to overcome them. Well, I think as a musician in uh, Colombo or in Sri Lanka, rather, I think it's a common thread for everyone that, you know, if you're a full-time musician, the rewards that you're going to reap from doing that full-time is going to be difficult unless you're doing the cover scene in the local industry, uh, in English music. Um, so if you're trying to do original music, um, I'd say not a challenge, but a reality that you have to face is that it's always going to be a niche market, um, but also that you might not necessarily make the returns on what you invest, in a financial sense. But if it's something that you love doing, then uh, obviously it's taken me two and a half years because there are challenges in terms of 
this being self-financed, so I pushed it myself. Um, all the expenses for it, all the time. Um, then, since you're bringing in other musicians, you have to you know schedule around their availability, things like that. But at the end of the day, I mean, if it's your passion, then you make it work. Uh, and yeah, so it's fine. I mean, we're finally here with it. Yes. Yeah. So finally, any last words of inspiration to give out to all the budding musicians out there? Um, I'd say if. You know, you're passionate about your music. Um, in this day and age, it's it's a lot about you know how the presentation is at the end of the day. But uh, I think it's essential to always remember that you get your basics right. You always stick true to what you believe in in terms of what you're trying to say through your music. Um, that's that's the message that's important. If it doesn't sell you as a musician saying, okay, I believe in what I'm writing, then I think it loses the message. So that's the core of it. If you keep that in mind, saying. Whatever I create or whatever I perform, it has to ring true to me. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us with us, Asil, today. And it was a pleasure having you with Thanks us. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having Thank me you. as well.